Hey everyone, Craig Anderson from CraigAndersonPhotography.com and welcome to another Lightroom tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at merging three exposures into one photograph and it's going to be using a combination of Lightroom and Photoshop and what you will see when we do this is you actually get to use all of the exposure in Lightroom once you've merged the three photographs and you'll see the exposure actually goes from minus 10 to plus 10 so it gives you a lot more information in a photograph can be used for high dynamic range so HDR photos but doesn't give you the HDR look it gives you a more realistic look in uh, in Lightroom so let's have a look as you can see here I've got three photos of uh, the same image so I was using a tripod uh, put bracketing on in the camera and it took three exposures and the exposures are, are roughly about two stops apart as you can see I've got the foreground a little island sitting in in the harbor and I've got uh, some some flight trails from an aircraft going over overhead so let's have a look at uh, going through and editing these photos so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three photos so just using holding down the command key and clicking on each of the photographs you see each one being highlighted and then I go up to the photo menu and I go down to edit in now you do need Photoshop for this to work so I've got down here merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop so let's go ahead and click now running both Lightroom and Photoshop does take a little bit of time this will all depend on the, the speed of your machine that you've got but we see we're across in Photoshop now and Photoshop is going through and processing the three photos together what you'll see pop up very shortly is the HDR Pro dialog box which is this dialog box over here and normally what happens in this mode if you go to 16-bit mode you then get all the sliders to process this photograph as an HDR typical HDR type photograph but we're not actually going to use that this time we're going to go and say merge them into a 32-bit file so this is taking all three files and merging them into one and it gives us all the information to play with you don't have to worry about this slider over here if I move it you'll see the image change this just affects the preview of the image it doesn't actually affect the information that goes across into the image I'm also going to click on the remove ghosts just because the aircraft was flying and even though it was really quick between shots you never know that uh, things might have moved so we just want to make sure that we remove ghosts and then we go down and click on OK and now we're merging into the three photographs into one photograph and we will end up with a 32-bit image that has all the information for us so we just wait for that to go and here it comes across into Photoshop in Photoshop we will just go file save and by doing file save what it's going to do is transfer the image back into Lightroom for us to be able to go through and start our editing process so it has saved now and I will get out of here and go back into Lightroom and what you'll see is we have a fourth image that's popped up in our Lightroom library window and that is the uh, TIFF image the .tif image which is the merged merged image that's come across from Photoshop so let's hit the D key which is the develop key and that takes us into the develop module and let's go through and start editing this the big thing I wanted to show you was down here at the exposure line normally this goes to up to about 2 or down to about minus 2 but if you can see here I can actually start going all the way down to minus 10 which gives me a complete black image and I can go all the way up to plus 10 which gives me a complete white image but it has all the information in it so I've got a lot more exposure to play with so let's go through I'm going to start by pushing my exposure up slightly because I want to get some information out of the shadows I'm going to take it up to about 1.25 it is also a sunset photo I'm going to make it just slightly warmer so let's drag it up to about there we go 5.2 and I can start going down I'm going to push a bit of contrast into this image 
I like it to be a little bit contrasty so we push it up to about 15 and now this is where a lot of the wow factor comes in with using this 32-bit image that's been merged we get into the highlights and I can pull my highlights right down to minus 100 it starts to pull all the detail out of the sky same thing with the shadow I'm gonna push I'm not gonna push it all the way up to 100 but I'll probably push it up to 75 you can already start to see if I use the backslash key so this is what it looks like now that I've pushed the shadows up that's what it looked like before so there was absolutely nothing in the shadows down in the island but now we've got a lot of detail that's that's come forward the blacks and whites again if I look up at my histogram here I think I'm pretty okay with my blacks and whites I don't think I'm actually gonna change my black and white points let's go down to the clarity I'm gonna push my clarity up probably to 30 just to make it a little bit sharper the image I'm also gonna push my vibrance up and push my vibrance up to 40 that'll give me a nice rich blue sky and also bring out some of the greens in in the island and I'll tell slightly touch my saturation up six is a bit high let's bring it down to a plus three gonna go back up now and use my graduated filter and I'm going to apply it you can see I've got a exposure of minus one slight contrast but I'm going to apply it at a slight angle just because of the way the land works I'll click on done and now I've got a really cool looking sunset got the flight trails going past and this is a really interesting looking photograph as we're going along now go down a little bit further I'm gonna go down to my detail section I'm gonna push my sharpening up to 75 bring out a bit more detail I'm gonna pull my noise reduction up I'm only going to bring it up slightly to about plus 20 it looks good and I'm going to change the color setting probably to 60 the reason I'm doing this is I do have in my shadows a little bit of purple and greens and by using this I can remove those purples and greens so if I just show you I'll go highlight one of the rocks over there move it around slightly and you can see I've got no purples and greens anymore so going down to my lens correction I know what lens I took this with so I'm gonna say enable profile collection it's a Canon lens and it is the EF 10 to 22 so that fixes a bit of pers perspective for me and I'm also going to go to the remove chromatic aberration so I'm happy with all that the last thing I'm going to do is set my highlight priority drop that down to about minus 15 which gives me a nice bit of vignetting on the edges and there you have it I've got a nice photorealistic looking photograph that is actually a combination of three different exposures merged into one if I use my backslash key that's what it looked like before this is what it looks like now I've pulled out the the information that's sitting in the shadow so you can see all the rocks on the island but I've kept all the detail in the sky I've also given a bit of color to that sunset hitting the clouds all in all good looking photo great technique to use make sure you do use a tripod when you take your exposures and merge them into Photoshop and bring them across that's all for this week this is Craig Anderson from CraigAndersonPhotography.com